Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the technical session two of Spatial Sciences of the annual International Research Conference 2023, Faculty of Built Environment and Spatial Sciences of General Sir John Kotlala Defense University. This session is evaluated by Professor Anuraga Vaidisekara, Professor M. S. Manavadu, and Dr. Niranga Alhagwa. This technical session is chaired by Dr. Milinda Piyasena, Senior Lecturer, Department of Survey and Geodesy, Faculty of Geometry, Sabargam University of Sri Lanka. Now, I cordially invite the rapporteur of the session, Surveyor and Planner, C.P. Ranavagar, to introduce the session chair. Serving in Geodesy, Faculty of Geometrics, University of Sabaragam, Sri Lanka. He obtained his bachelor's degree in Serving Sciences from Sabaragam University and completed his master's degree in land management from the Technical University of Munich, Germany. He earned his PhD in Urban Studies from the University of Bau and in Germany. The Kamilin the PSNS research interest focused on the establishment of national spatial data infrastructure for Sri Lanka and the means of spatial information utilization for building a sustainable urban and rural environment in which he has published several books and journal articles and developed several spatial data applications for formulating <coughs> land information systems in Sri Lanka. We cannot forget the immense contribution of Dr. Milita Yasena in the field of surveying sciences and geodesy as an academic and a professional with this profound educational and professional background mentioned. Dear sir, I cordially invite you to chair the session. Thank you. 
Good evening, all. I am GA MH Gamarachi, undergraduate of General Sir John Kotlaoyo Defense University, following PSC honors in Surveillance and Business Weekly Program. Mm -hmm. This is the topic of my research paper and evaluation of Tapasquare Degram GNSS observation. Uh, let's go to the content of my presentation. First of all, I uh, included the introduction part, uh, then the research problem and the objective, uh, then the methodology, uh, results and analysis, and finally the conclusion. Let's go to the introduction. Global navigation satellite system is provide reliable positioning, <coughs> navigation, and timing services with global coverage. So, it is found by United States the Department of Defense in 1970s after the established global positioning system. Then, uh, it is a uh, satellite based positioning is a landmark of science and technology in modern era. So, we use electromagnetic waves to we use electromagnetic waves uh, to transmit the signal uh, from the satellite to the receiver. Uh, Earth is a, it, Earth has a uh, big uh, laptop uh, in Earth atmosphere uh, like this. Uh, and the Earth atmosphere is divided into different types of layers. Uh, as the presentation, uh, like exosphere, thermosphere, mesosphere, stratosphere, and the Troposphere. Uh, the thermosphere is the ionosphere, and the troposphere, uh, the thermosphere and the ionosphere, ionosphere and the troposphere is uh, very important for the satellite signals uh, because uh, the com component of those layers are uh, effect for the satellite signal delay. So uh, there are two types of uh, atmospheric errors in the satellite signals. Uh, the tropospheric error and the uh, ionospheric error. So ionospheric error is uh, something big and we can um, calculate this using mathematical functions and also tropospheric effect is uh, smaller than ionospheric even error but uh, it, can, it is difficult to calculate uh, due to the component of meteorological data. So I have a question. Uh, as the research problem, uh, how does tropospheric delay affect for the GNSS observations at different times of the day? Uh, so uh, that means uh, we have three times like morning, afternoon, and the evening. I consider about the, these three different times of the day, and the objective of this problem to determine tropospheric delay on GNSS observation in different times of the day. So there are two another research problems as what is the best tropospheric model that can be used to minimize the effect of tropospheric delay. What are the tropospheric models? Uh, so there are some um, methods to minimize uh, tropospheric error as uh, ray tracing method. Uh, parameter estimate, model approach, and the external correction. So I used model approach to uh, mi minimize the tropospheric delay in this study. So uh, the objective of the research problem is to determine the best tropospheric model which can be used to minimize tropospheric delay. So another research question that I have, what is the best time for getting GNSS observation? So uh, in the second research problem, uh, I hope to do what is the model can be used. And the uh, first uh, first research problem, I talk about different times of the day. So uh, it is an objective to determine the best time for the getting GNSS observation. So uh, let's go to the methodology. Under the methodology, I talk about three main categories, selected point for data observation, data used, and the research methodology. Let's go to the selected point for data observation. I select the uh, SLD 99 uh, coordinate point in Sri Lankan datum. Uh, so it is the A166 primary control point, which is situated in Purunagala 
district variable survey department office. So I get the coordinates of the point from the survey department. Uh, then I used these coordinates to uh, as the base coordinate, uh, original coordinates of the point. Uh, then uh, I used uh, E600 receivers to collect uh, static raw data, uh, use mass angle as the 15 degree and 5 seconds Ampere rate, and also I use dual frequency. So uh, let's go to the <coughs> workflow of the study. Uh, in this workflow, there are three main categories as the field data collection, data processing, and analysis. Uh, in the field data collection, uh, I choose a dual frequency static for GNSS data uh, in 24 hours uh, in 28 March 2022. So, uh, I, after the collecting, uh, I use Laika Geo Office 8.4 version software to post processing my raw data. After that, I analyze, uh, ana analyze my results uh, using uh, Microsoft Excel. So, uh, in the, in the research uh, data processing, I uh, make three uh, time intervals uh, as the morning, afternoon, and evening. In the morning, uh, all the time period have three uh, hour of a period. Morning period is 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, 9 a.m. Uh, afternoon is 12 noon to 3 p.m. Evening is uh, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. So. Uh, I use three tropospheric modules to uh, minimize the tropospheric delay of raw data. I used uh, Hopfield field model, simplify Hopfield field model, and the Sastra model. After that, I analyze uh, my uh, processed data using uh, those criteria. So, uh, let's go to the results. At the results, uh, I, uh, in the morning observations, uh, there is, uh, I get the results as the lowest uh, latitudinal and longitudinal direction in de degree minute seconds. Uh, so, in the morning, uh, lowest la latitudinal direction is uh, shows by Sastamonian model uh, and the <coughs> highest is shown by simplified Hopfield model. Uh, not only the latitudinal direction, uh, but also have longitudinal direction. Uh, Sastamonian model shows the highest value and the uh, Hopfield model shows the lowest value. Uh, then the afternoon results, uh, we can get the uh, uh, latitudinal direction. Sastamonian model shows the lowest deviation and the Hopfield model shows the highest uh, deviation. Uh, then the longitudinal direction of afternoon observations. Uh, Sastramonian model shows the lowest deviation to the, uh, from the original coordinates and the simplified Hopfield model shows the highest deviation from the original coordinates. Uh, not only the afternoon. Uh, let's go to the evening results. As the evening results, uh, there is uh, some similar uh, variation in the latitudinal and longitudinal direction. Uh, simplify Hopfield model shows the highest value uh, to the latitudinal and longitudinal direction, and the Sastramonian model shows the lowest deviation to the original coordinates. So let's go to the analysis. This is the analysis of the morning observation. Uh, the B uh, in the graph, the B red color point is shows the original coordinates. Uh, M1 is uh, the coordinates using Hopfield model to minimize the tropospheric delay. M2 is the simplified Hopfield model, uh, the used by the minimize the tropospheric delay, and the M3 is used uh, Sastramonian model to the minimize um, tropospheric delay. So in this we can analyze M1. Uh, this coordinate, this point is shows the minimum variation, uh, which is used Hopfield model, uh, Hopfield model, and the M3 is maximum variation, shows, which is used Sastramonian model. Uh, let's go to the 
afternoon observation. Uh, in this, uh, as the previous one, B is the original coordinates, and uh, we can see there is a lot of big difference uh, among all the three coordinates. So A3 is the minimum shows the minimum variation, which is used as model model to minimize the tropospheric delay, uh, and A2, uh, which used simplified hop field to minimize the tropospheric delay on the uh, afternoon observation shows the highest value. So at the evening, uh, this is the original coordinates. E3 is the minimum, uh, shows the minimum variation towards the base uh, original coordinate. Uh, E3 is used uh, Sastamonium model to minimize the tropospheric delay. Uh, E2 is the highest, shows the highest variation, uh, which is used uh, simplified home field model. So uh, finally we can get, uh, this is the final uh, graph that used um, that uh, analysis of the my research my research so uh, a3 m3 e3 are used by, used sastamonium model to minimize the tropospheric delay uh, so let's go to the uh, conclusion of my presentation uh, as the con conclusion uh, there is a big variation while we are using, uh, while we are processing uh, 12 noon to 3 p.m. Uh, in GNSS observation, so we can get uh, the that time period is not suitable for uh, getting uh, GNSS applications because uh, there is a huge variation uh, using at that time, and also uh, in according to this study, we can get Sastamonian model is su suitable for getting observation with minimal variation uh, while we are mi minimizing tropospheric delay on GNSS observation. Uh, and also, uh, there uh, we can, uh, while we are using GNSS applications, we can get uh, observation more in the morning time. Uh, we can get uh, accurate values uh, in the original coordinates. So uh, these are the limitation of my study. Uh, I only use like a GeoOffice 8.4 processing software. If anyone like to compare these ob these observations with another. Uh, processing software like uh, Trimble Business Center, uh, Magnet Tool, uh, anyone can uh, exceed this study uh, using that step and also I only use 50 cutoff angle for observation. Uh, anyway, then uh, we can use different mask angle to getting observations uh, in these uh, times of the day and on I only consider about the tropospheric delay of GNSS observation too. Uh, as the further improvements, uh, it can be uh, checked different processing software packages. So these are the references that I used to uh, make this research paper. And also, I would like to thank who all are support to me uh, to achieve these objectives and the. Uh, this presentation for thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I think it's very interesting, and there will be a lot of questions. <coughs> so um, next, I would like to invite um, Miss uh, N M Madhusha to present her. Uh, 
the beginning, let's first understand what is soil erosion. Uh, actually, soil erosion is a uh, uh, soil erosion is a natural uh, uh, soil erosion is a natural environment effect. Uh, Soil erosion. Uh, soil erosion is a natural process that removes the soil materials by erosive agents like uh, water, wind, gravity, and human disturbances. Uh, so, uh, and a splash, sheep, creek, gully, and a bank all are the examples for soil erosion by water. Uh, erosion in gully is a crucial sign for potential in soil erosion risk. Therefore, in here, I study that case as a soil erosion risk. Uh, According to that, I uh, mainly provide the, uh, I mainly use the device re re universal soil use equation to uh, predict the soil erosion map using five variables and uh, identify complex partial pattern through each variables through the artificial neural network model. And further, in here, I, I incorporate the Russell with a GIS to determine the effect of land use, land cover conservation on average annual soil use in color watershed. As considering the importance of soil assessment of soil erosion, uh, soil erosion is a, a pressing environmental issue that affects both <coughs> agricultural productivity and natural ecosystem. Uh, it uh, involves the displacement of topsoil, which contains the main, uh, which contains uh, essential nutrition for plant growth. Uh, uh, by the main action by the, the water uh, and the, uh, uncontrolled <coughs> soil erosion can lead to reduce the uh, reduce the soil fertility, increase in sedimentation in rivers, and uh, recreation of aquatic habits. Uh, therefore, uh, the accurate measurement of soil erosion is a more a crucial sign for uh, sustainable land management and conservation efforts. Uh, 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 to make, uh, <coughs> manage, let, let's turn to aim that are accomplished by, uh, I mainly provide method for determining soil erosion vulnerability by uh, passing three methods, evaluation of land use changes, assessment of soil erosion severity, and landslide frequency ratio method. And uh, these are the sub, uh, object, uh, sub uh, goals I achieved from in here. Uh, in here, I picked the Kalu River catchment as my study area because it is drainage for dry zone and uh, it has strength in hydroelectricity and supporting inland and outland development for. Uh, uh, as the second largest river in Sri Lanka. Uh, additionally, these institute materials are aided in initiating uh, research, uh, as I mentioned in here. Uh, now let's uh, shift our focus toward the export the emperor methodology. Uh, as a first step, I derived a uh, soil erosion map using a uh, revised universal soil use equation and artificial neural network model. Uh, for that, uh, landsat satellite images was used to identify the land use changes and crop management factors, respectively uh, rainfall erosivity, uh, soil erodibility, crop ma land management and slope length and steepness factors are derived from rainfall data, <coughs> uh, so soil property and SRTM data. Then the multiple linear regression analysis was used to identify the importance of the each, each variable for the soil erosion. As a second phase, I uh, soil erosion map from uh, Russell model and ANN model uh, is validated by using the ROC curves uh, and, and the uh, la lands, uh, soil erosion hazard uh, with correlation with uh, land use change and uh, landslide case. Uh, de determined by landslide frequency ratio method. According to that, river distribution zones are uh, portrayed as a, as a uh, final output. Uh, then the uh, next uh, move to uh, key findings of my research. This study conduct the land use, ca uh, land use analysis and uh, classify into five categories, namely as uh, two uh, water bodies, agricultural, forest, urban area, and bare land. Uh, from 2000 to 2020, and the, uh, in here that river, the agricultural area and the uh, 
urban area is increasing as 7.87% and 2.61%. From 2000 to 2020, in contrast, uh, bear land is decreasing by 11.41% in the same time period. The implementation of validation process is a uh, validation process is to obtain a reliable outcome from the plan. In, according, in, uh, in this regard, the confusion matrix is used to evaluate the uh, overall accuracy of classific uh, land, uh, image classifications and uh, with uh, Kappa, uh, corresponding Kappa option for each year. Uh, in this, uh, you know, I, uh, 2020, uh, confusion matrix between ground truth and land use classes, value of commission, omission, producer accuracy and uh, uses accuracy for classified land use classes. According to that, uh, uh, the Kappa commission value is 0 0.81. It's uh, nearly, it's become a nearly 1. It means it's a uh, perfect matching match for ground truth data. So uh, this map uh, depicting uh, the slope length and steepness factor, rainfall erosivity, uh, soil erodibility, crop management and land factor, uh, land management factors uh, from the Russell model. Uh, and uh, this study, multiple linear regression analysis is used to find the, co uh, find the uh, important of each factors and uh, in, according to the summary of the model, the uh, plant uh, slope, slope length and steepness factor, uh, crop management factor, uh, land management factors are uh, most prominent in uh, than other factors according to the PR values. Uh, and these are the relationship between each factors and soil erosion uh, for, for the multiple linear regression analysis. And the so next the soil erosion assessment. Uh, soil erosion assessment is uh, used, uh, is de derived from Russell and uh, NN model. In here, I visualize the reverse universal soil equation model to predict the 2020 and 2000, 2000 uh, soil erosion map. According to that, I identify the slight increasing of soil erosion risk in uh, that class 2 radicate. Here the zoom view of the soil erosion map in 2000 uh, from the Russell model uh, is denoted the uh, soil erosion is prominent in along the stream, along the uh, stream lines. Furthermore, ANN module uh, the 2020 soil erosion map from ANN module is shown in here and the uh, scatter plots of actual was predictor variable, uh, predictor data for a artificial neural network model is uh, used to uh, firstly uh, training data and is te uh, testing and validation process. <coughs> uh, the, vali the validation is done by using ROC curves and the uh, goodness of the each uh, models I identify using uh, the area under curves values. According to that, the Russell model area under curves value is getting as a 0 0.706 and the ANN model area under curve values is getting as a 0 0.647. It means the Russell model is best fit for my study area as Paludiva area. And uh, furthermore, Landsat frequency ratio for each land use classes and uh, each uh, soil erosion classes were estimated and uh, so uh, the I identified the uh, land soil frequency ratio is high in agriculture and urban area and the uh, soil erosion uh, moderate class uh, land soil frequency ratio value is high area so, uh, so I proved the, according to that the uh, Lands like uh, is uh, prominent in uh, prominent in uh, agriculture and urban area in moderate soil erosion class. And uh, lands and frequency ratio for river distribution curve I derives from these three maps. And uh, finally, the lands uh, frequent the river distribution zones are quadrized according to the landslide frequency ratio value and the average annual soil use equate rates and uh, the land use uh, class changes. Uh, as I mentioned in here, as the area covered by soil erosion hazard class of each river distribution zone and the landslide frequency ratio of the river distribution zones. So, uh, I identify the uh, landslide frequency ratio values, 
high and such because it is your value in A8 so on and 11 so on. It's mean the middle carbonyl area is highly vulnerable than other area for the land, soil and soil erosion. So uh, in the conclusion, according to my objective, uh, Russell model is identify the site increasing in la, uh, land uh, soil erosion uh, from uh, last last two decades due to the agricultural activities and urbanization. And the multiple linear regression analysis is identify the uh, slope length and steepness factor, crop management factor, and uh, land management factors are uh, most uh, effective factors for soil erosion than others. Uh, the, and the, uh, comparing Russell model and artificial neural network model, uh, uh, ROC curves can be derived. Uh, the Russell model is best fit for my study area. And uh, finally, uh, the uh, middle carbonyl area is the most prominent area for the landslide and solution. Uh, with this, we come to the end of my presentation. And these are the my reference of our study here. Uh, so I extend my heartfelt gratitude to all. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Ms. Mashani. I think it's very complex and very interesting research. Uh, there are so many things that you have to find out. It's very interesting. I think there will be a lot of questions as well. So uh, next, I would like to uh, invite uh, Mr. A. I. Halakon. Uh, his research paper is analysis of Humber Thutter costs on inf uh, infringement enforcement by cost conservation and cost resource management using the process. <coughs> so, the floor is yours.
after identifying my uh, problem, <coughs> we generated uh, uh, we generated uh, the general objective as uh, to analyze how much the coastal zone infringement uh, imposed by coast conservation and coastal resource management using remote sensing. Uh, to achieve general objective, uh, there are three research questions. They are uh, uh, what is the role of uh, remote sensing and GIS to identify the sustainable development growth in a settlement in an area? Uh, how to create building index map using uh, remote sensing and GIS? Uh, to what extent is the infringement of rules and regulation in the Hamantra coastal zone active? So by focusing that uh, questions, these are my uh, specific uh, objectives. Under my methodology part, we proposed this uh, analysis to uh, Hambantara coastal zone, uh, but it is uh, 128 kilometer lengthy and uh, coastal zone width is uh, 300 meters. So, uh, 128 kilometer length and uh, 300 meter width is not relevant to process. Uh, these are the uh, required data and resources for this uh, research. Uh, Landsat satellite images, uh, final vegetation line boundary course coordinates, and uh, building locations, uh, etc. Uh, we found uh, best two locations uh, which are having infringements and uh, coastal zone uh, coastal zone construction constructions located in uh, Tangol DS division in uh, Hambantur district. Location one is uh, Kudavali West to uh, Mavel South and uh, second location is uh, Onoparupu West to uh, uh, Madhakatiya. Uh, here we required some uh, statistical data. Uh, first we gathered uh, coordinates of uh, CCD points to make uh, 300 co meters uh, coastal buffer zone and also we got uh, Coast Conservation Department issued issued uh, permits to calculate legal constructed um, land coverage and CCD points are, are the seaside uh, border of the coastal zone. Here is uh, our experimental workflow. Uh, first we gained uh, 6 USDS uh, images from 2002 to uh, 2022. So I selected 2002, 2006, 2010, uh, 2014, 2018 and 2022 uh, year images due to the monsoon Monsoon, there are a lot of uh, clouds and uh, we pick uh, February and March uh, satellite images and uh, to get uh, clear variation we used uh, 4 years gap. Uh, then we did uh, image pre-processing uh, separately, then we created normalized difference build up index and uh, then identify the building range through the ground truth data. And uh, after doing that, uh, we done the uh, accuracy assessment and uh, validation separately. Uh, then the built-up area and uh, comparison in a coastal zone, we identified the, finally we evaluated the results and recommendation. Uh, this is the created uh, normalized difference uh, building index for uh, area 1. Uh, here the color represents the red color for the built-up uh, built area range and uh, green color shows the uh, vegetation uh, area, non built up areas. And uh, there is the uh, building index model and uh, normalized different building index for, for my uh, case study area 2. This is the accuracy assessment for uh, uh, location one. Here we use another ground uh, ground truth value set to each year to done uh, accuracy assessment. So we check uh, use accuracy uh, use accuracy uh, proceed uh, proceed accuracy uh, overall accuracy and kappa uh, coefficient. And uh, this is the accuracy assessment for the. Location number two. Uh, this is our final output. Uh, reclassified uh, building layer for study area one. Uh, when considering 2002 and 2006 years, we can see how the building index decreased due to the uh, tsunami and uh, how the building index improved until uh, 2000, 
22 and this is for the study area number 2 reclassified building building layers This graph shows the how the built-up and non-built-up area varied from 2002 to 2022 according to cost conservation and cost resource management records. The total approved built-up area is in the in here, and those values are less than reclassified built-up area, so we can understand there are some infringements. This is an this is the area variance, variation for the location number 2. Uh, it is uh, same as the location number 1. Uh, under my conclusion, analysis through uh, remote sensing and GIS, GIS is very useful for because representing ability is very high in this field. Uh, cost, the coastal region uh, which has been gradually uh, developed for the past 20 years was destroyed by you know, 2004 tsunami disaster as well as business construction and the home of the homes of the common people. If there is any need to uh, construct a sustainable development in the uh, coastal zone, coast conservation and coastal resource management department has res responsibility to issue permits for that project in the scheduled area in the coastal zone. Under my limitations and recommendations, I consider an uh, absence of uh, cloud-free Landsat images to required area and uh, also we uh, consider the resolution of the available satellite images. Under the further improvements, the accuracy of the output of the study can be improved if we use uh, FitBird satellite images are used in uh, instead of uh, Landsat satellite images to conduct this an analysis. The study should be uh, conducted covering the uh, entire coastal area of Sri Lanka to protect the coastal zone and uh, analyze the build-up area variations. In here, uh, there are several references uh, I used for my research. And finally, I like to acknowledge uh, everyone who helped to this research. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Anakorn. I think uh, it's also uh, important for in future, you know, sustainable uh, constructions and also avoid advancing uh, 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 future uh, reflex and electric trust. So now I would like to invite uh, Mr. W. Uh, G.D. Sandarwan um, take the presentation. His topic is the effect of seasonal variability in mean sea level and tidal constituents, a case study in China. Seasonal variability in sea level and tidal constituents that we study in Sri Lanka. This is the content of my presentation. First, I will explain the introduction related to the study. Tides. Tides mean periodic tides and cold of sea surface water, which is caused by the gravitational force of the moon, sun, and by the rotation of the earth. When considered the tidal constituent, each one of the identity motions can be represented by a simple harmonic cosine curve. It is a tidal constituent. The tidal constituent contributes to represent overall tidal behavior at the particular location. According to the uh, period of the tidal constituent, there are three categories. They are semi-unural, lunaral, and down period constituent. And also, each tidal constituent has two harmonic constants, which are amplitude and its space value. Then harmonic analysis is used to determine the amplitude and phase of the individual frequency component, it means a tidal constituent, it involves breaking down the complex tidal wave into its individual frequency components 
uh, which is done by representing the title data as the sum of sinusoidal functions with specific amplitude, phases, and period. When consider the season, season means a, uh, is a period of the year that is distinguished by special climate condition. In Sri Lanka, experienced by two main monsoon seasons, which are northeast monsoon and southeast monsoon. Typically, the northeast monsoon occurred from December to the following year February and southeast monsoon occurred from May to September. Then I will explain the research problem and the objective. The fluctuation in seawater level are influenced by each of the tidal constituents. Then understanding the seasonal variability of tidal constituents is important for accurately predicting tidal behavior at a particular location. When consider the Sri Lanka, they have a lack of When considering Sri Lanka, they have a lack of studies on the seasonal variability of tides and tidal transcription around Sri Lanka. So, based on the research problem, the study was conducted to analyze the mean sea level and tidal transcription variation with the seasonal variation. Let's move to the methodology of the study. First, obtain the Hawaii collected existing tidal data for Colombo, then check the continuity of the obtained data. Then choose data for seven years. In year, from October to the following year, September was considered as one year. Then separate each yearly data set into six month interval data set. Then process each data set using tortoise of cap. Then analyze the mean sea level variability. After that, analyze the seasonal variability of tidal constituents. Let's move to the result of this study. First, I will explain the mean sea level variability for Colombo. In here, uh, mean sea level value in the bar chart and the table are related to the lowest astronomical type datum. In the bar chart, yellow color indicates the mean sea level value during northeast monsoon, and green color indicates the mean sea level value during southeast monsoon. According to the bar chart and the table, you can see mean sea level exhibit a pattern uh, with seasonal variation by showing high value during southwest monsoon uh, in all years uh, except in the two years which are 2050 to 2060 and 2020 to 2021 year. To identify a reason for the mean sea level pattern change in the about two years, first consider the El Nino and La Nina in a event. For that, only index values were obtained from the Climate Prediction Center of NOVA, then represented those values as a bar chart. According to the bar chart, in here, red bars indicate the very strong El Nino event and it occurred during Northeast monsoon month of the 2050 2060 year. In here, indicate the moderate La Nina event and it occurred took, took during Northeast monsoon month of the 2020 2021 year. El Nino and La Nina are two opposite events. So the result of these events should be opposite. But as I explained the earlier, the mean sea level have increased during northeast monsoon of these two years. So in here it can be said that El Nino and La Nina may not the reason for the change in the mean sea level variability pattern. So to identify another reason for the mean sea level variability pattern done a comparison with Maldives mean sea level. For that, tidal data was obtained from the PSMS website for the Malay tidal station in Maldives for the same period. Then process data by following same methodology as the Colombo tidal data processing. According to the bar chart, you can see uh, mean sea level at Malay exhibit a similar pattern as the Colombo and also the pattern change in the same two years as the Colombo. So here it can be said that a common factor may have influenced the change in the mean sea level variability pattern at both locations. Then I will explain the variation of the tidal constituent. Uh, amplitude and phase variability of 12 tidal constituent were considered across three different categories. First I will explain the amplitude variability of the major neural constituent. According to the bar chart, you can see all four constituents exhibit a similar pattern in all years uh, with seasonal variation. Then let's see the amplitude variability of the major semidural constituent. In here also, all constituents exhibit a similar pattern 
in all years except M2 and S2 constituent in the two years. As I explained the earlier, the mean sea level pattern also changed in the same two years and also the mean sea level value have increased during northeast monsoon of the, these two years. And also uh, Lian and others have shown that by their research, amplitude of N2 and S2 type constituents are more sensitive to local depth changes and sea level rise tend to enlarge the amplitude. So thus increasing of the mean sea level of the reason is the reason for the change in the amplitude variability pattern of M2 and S2 tile constituent. Then let's see the amplitude variability of the lone period constituent. In the also all constituent exhibit uh, exhibit patterns in all years but patterns were different from each constituent. Then let's see the phase variability of the major lunar constituent. According to the bar charts, all constituent exhibit patterns in all years uh, except K1 and M1 constituent in the two years. Then let's see the phase variability of the major semi-dural constituent. In here also, all four constituent exhibit patterns in all years except M2 and S2 constituent in the two years. As I explained the earlier, the El Nino and La Nina event occurred in the same two years and the mean sea level pattern also changed in the same two years. So, this event may, may be the reason for the change in the phase variability pattern of this constituent. Then let's see the phase variability of the lone period constituent. According to charts, all constituent exhibit some different pattern in all years is seasonal variation uh, and also there is no relationship between these pattern. Finally, I move to the conclusion of this study. According to the result, the mean sea level value exhibit the same pattern for Colombo with seasonal variation by showing a high value during the southwest monsoon. When consider the seasonal variation of the type constituent, the amplitude of all dunaral constituent was higher during the northeast monsoon compared to the southwest monsoon at Colombo, indicating that pattern in all years. The amplitude of all semi dunaral constituent exhibits an opposite pattern of dunaral constituent. Then the amplitude of lone period constituent exhibit a pattern, but patterns were different from each other. Then the phase of each tile constituent exhibit a pattern, but there is no relationship between these patterns unlike the amplitude variability. Finally, the study concluded that the amplitude and phase of tile constituent exhibit significant pattern with seasonal variation. These are the differences which I used to prepare my presentation. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Sandor. Uh, this is the final presentation, so uh, the floor is now uh, in the open for the uh, questions. So um, I would like to take uh, one by one presenters, so that uh, as usual. Um, so I would like to uh, first take the uh, paper which is presented by uh, Ms. Gamarachi. So uh, her main uh, focus was to uh, find out uh, the impact of uh, tropospheric on the uh, DNSS question, right? <coughs> so uh, I think uh, the mainly the floor is open for the audience to uh, ask, to clarify, or yes. Yes, uh, that's a good presentation. Yeah, I would like to add some comment on that one. Actually, uh, uh, you made a conclusion uh, based on uh, uh, just one single processing software and one uh, one DNSS uh, instrument was used. I think it would be better if you could uh, use several uh, instruments and several softwares and come up with a uh, conclusion. And also, uh, it would be better 
<coughs> you can try uh, the network solution also at the same time while uh, commenting on uh, space uh, with the differential mode. And also, I would like to add one more comment if you uh, view your calculations and results uh, in grid, grid coordinates, it would be much better. Right? Just a comment and a question. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, is there any other? Yes, there's another question. I also have the same comment actually. When we see the, uh, your representation with this uh, latitude longitude with the WGS 84, even I cannot understand what is the deviation from original location to these three uh, <coughs> models. What is the, is a three centimeter or three millimeter, what is that deviation? Can you tell that part? The, that is the main issue actually I'm also facing. To understand from the original location, you say this the morning time, evening time and the night time, the, which is the best one is the morning time. Even when we get the morning time, what is the deviation in meters or millimeters or centimeters, whatever the number? Thank you for the question, sir. Uh, in this study, I uh, does not uh, calculate the numerical value of the proposed theories. I analyze it is using um, degree minutes. I'm not asking about the. <coughs> your calculation for the atmospheric correction. I am asking the deviation from ground location to another location because you are getting the different coordinates. What is that deviation? As uh, Survey General correctly mentioned, if you put it in the national coordinate system, at least we can find it. But I am asking you the number, what is the total deviation? If I used to process my data like a geologist, uh, it has uh, the degree minus second value. So I got the uh, decimal degree value um, for all the coordinates. And then I process it. Uh, I think uh, it's a valid question, probably. I think probably, when, yeah, you get the uh, uh, degrees and seconds, but I think it's better as uh, the audience request. I think we realize that you can represent it so that the layman can also <coughs> understand those numbers. Can. Fields. They, they can understand meters and millimeters, no? sometimes degrees and minutes, so it's not something that It would be nice to have uh, you know, uh, in your slide. So we'll appreciate this. Thank you. Um, any other? So if there is no any other questions, is there any? I guess no any other questions, I think. Then um, we can move to the next presenter. Uh, Ms. Madhushani. So her topic was uh, basically soil erosion um, assessment using the Russell and ANN models and I identified the correlations by landslide frequency ratio method, case study of the Kalup River catchment of Sri Lanka. So in her research basically she has uh, um, identified um, basically uh, the catchment areas which are basically uh, highly subjected to the so erosions and which are not that much subject to the so erosions and it's a very interesting one and also uh, rather complex uh, study. So anything, any uh, comments from the, any comments or any questions from the audience? I would be glad. Uh, is there anything? Any questions? There's one question there. Yes, yeah. Okay. In, in one of your slides, you mentioned the total erosion. Okay. If you can go to that slide, because this is not only for, for everyone I'm telling actually, you point, you gave the number, zero points and ten digits. I don't know, <laughs> is it useful to have a number like that to represent your erosion, even there is no unit. Still, I am confusing to understand what is the total erosion you are going to tell us. Thank you for the question, sir. Uh, can you move the slide number? Can you move slide number one? Conclusion. Ah, this one. Is that one? No. Conclusion. Ah, that one. 
Yeah, why I'm asking this, this question is there is because uh, just for information and also for the information of the audience as well. Now, not only Nambathur district, but the entire coastal area around Sri Lanka has been kind of uh, mapped uh, and also uh, recorded with kind of uh, available buildings and uh, with the support of the survey department's uh, information and also satellite images and also extensive crowd survey. Uh, really that, uh, the road survey that we have done. Uh, by the Department of Town and Planning. Uh, so uh, that is what, what we have done is that for the whole area. And it is presented to the uh, uh, post Department as well. That's why I'm asking whether you, if you have talked to them, you might have, uh, they might have told you that uh, it is already done. Uh, that was in 2022, right? And unfortunately, we are not in a position to publish it because it was a consultancy project undertaken by Sri Lanka through the Development Authority. So they have the copyright. So that is one of their purposes and also now it is with the UDA, it's handed over the UDA in order to kind of integrate with the uh, development plans uh, so that they, they have the kind of enforcement power. They will be kind of integrated with the kind of regulations and so on very soon. It's already uh, kind of approved by the kind of, uh, used by the planning uh, committee as well, right? Just for information, but uh, you can uh, kind of uh, show your work and also kind of that information also because uh, we have developed uh, entire coastal zone into 700 different maps following the standards of the survey department and uh, its map and we will kind of record it. So uh, just for information, just to make uh, it Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I think it's very important for us also to report the case in the future research at this run. So uh, that's, that we didn't know actually. <laughs> But they should have. It's public funds, I guess, at the end. Yeah. 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 Data sharing is the problem. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right? There's a big issue. Uh, being a, I mean, educational site, uh, you better ask that one. Because we are, you, especially geo information should be there to use for decision making and other requirements. If it is hanging around, then meaningless. So that is a good initiative and try to last that one to reach this <laughs> That's a major problem. Actually, that's a problem we discussed in the period session. Exactly. Right. Your no, this, was, this was actually the some right line, but we said, okay, there's no point in coming up with this method without knowing what is the present situation. Right? That's why we undertook this uh, an extensive amount of work. So that it's uh, good to kind of uh, publish it at least by them because we can't do it. Uh, and also, post consultation department also requested that information for them to kind of uh, guide their development, guide their kind of uh, post consultation plans. And also, there's no point in keeping it because data becomes outdated anyway, right? so that it has to be done very fast. Exactly. Special, special data gets outdated. So, you publish that. So, any other questions from the audience? Next presenter, uh, Mrs. Sandra. 
So I think it's a bit uh, complex analysis, I guess, with a lot of uh, graphs and other things. So uh, there would be, uh, be some questions as well, but uh, as far as I could understand, you try to find out why this, uh, what are the impacts of this uh, variation of the means in the world? Uh, is that, if I'm correct, yeah? As far as specific. So, um, yeah, uh, the, the, the floor is open for the audience. Questions. I have basically two questions. Can you tell me what is mean zero? Mean zero means uh, average sea level. Average sea level. No? How long we are looking at? Uh, Normally we get to get uh, Okay, you may not know about this one. How low? I also don't know, but the surgeon will tell us it. He has the information. But you are talking about the variation of mean sea level within seven years. Is it possible to do that? Too? To normally get the mean sea level, we need to analyze the uh, 90x data. In here, we only focus the Identify the mean sea level variation uh, for, with the means sea monsoon season. You, have to, you are not going to look at variation of mean sea level. You are looking at the tidal variation reference to the mean sea level. Am I correct? Yes. Then what do you have? Only it's. Uh, I got little bit uh, nervous when I see this, uh, you are talking about the mean sea level variation. To do the mean sea level variation, at least we need 5,000 years of data to see that one. Because we are defining the mean sea level by using at least 100 years of data. Then looking at that variation with 7 years, mean sea level, it's not a mean sea level variation. You are looking at the Sea level changes reference to the mean sea level. If we are looking at the mean sea level changes, then all the elevation values on our country is going to be varied. That is my point to tell you. Uh, th thank you very much for raising this. I think it's a very valid question. Do you, you have any answers to that one? This is something that we also uh, kind of uh, came also have the challenge of deciding the building height since particular task I mentioned earlier. So mean sea level, when we asked from the survey department also, they also said, okay, there's no mean sea level, mean sea level is not very well defined like that. I mean, we want to get certain points, but either thing will also be general say that. Uh, so either kind of define mean sea level at a given time. Say for example, for this year, what is the mean sea level of Kalambo? <laughs> is there still like that? That's what I mean. That's what I mean. You, 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 you cannot define the mean sea level in every year. That's it. Yeah. Actually, yes. Actually, mean sea, mean sea level is a thing that we have decided after several years' tidal observation. Now, for Sri Lanka, we have defined one mean sea level. So, we uh, now all the heights. Whatever it is, uh, so much of height with respect to that one. Actually, practically, there is no line set out as zero level. Some places even, sea is going up and down. Uh, there are some places uh, uh, near, what do you call, near uh, Ustatagaya, even below sea level, within the country. Right? So, the mean sea level has to be changed with some series of observation, maybe once a hundred years, like that. So, any observation, anything with respect to mean sea level can be calculated based on that one. Even we are, even you are, even here, you can give the mean sea, with respect to mean sea level height of the place with respect to mean sea level with the definition of that one. Now, uh, we have uh, uh, level lines and we have benchmarks with respect to mean sea level all over the country. If you get somebody with respect to them, that uh, what is the height? Uh, with respect to that value, you get the mean sea level height. Even stations, you might see this mean station is above this much based on the closer benchmark, right? So uh, anyway, uh, what is uh, what is interested in uh, his uh, presentation? He has compared the variation, uh, what he called the tidal, uh, the, uh, 
variation, not the mean sea level, uh, in Sri Lanka as well as in uh, Singapore, no? Maldives. Maldives. So, somewhat, yeah, the, the changes are similar in that uh, era. So, there is a good point he has identified. But anyway, uh, your headings and naming should be carefully uh, given through that process, uh, topic, right? That's the thing. Thank you very much for that comments. I think it's very important to you know, address its future. Okay. So, any other things from any other comments or questions from the audience? Um, if not, then uh, we can wind up the session and then we can. You know. So, I would like to thank uh, for the uh, factor of this. Uh, KDU and also uh, Dr. Rakma is uh, the one I think who is taking a lot of burdens on this event. So uh, and I thank him to invite him for this event and also uh, heads of the departments and also the staff and students and the colleagues, everybody. So uh, thank you very much for inviting us and yeah, we'll conclude the event. Thank you. to the presenters. To give away the certificates, I would like to invite the chair of the session, Dr. Melinda PSA. Gamarachi and others. <laughs> NMO Madhushani and AKRN Ranasing. WGD Sandalwan and NDEK Gunatigar. Thank you, sir. Please remain on stage. Now, I cordially invite Dr. A. H. Lakmal, Dean, Faculty of Built Environment and Spatial Sciences, accompanied by the Faculty Coordinator of IRC 2023, Architect N.M.R.A.T. Navaratna, to award a token of appreciation to the session chair, Dr. Milinda Piersi. The Dean of PESS, Dr. A. H. Lakma, to remain on stage to give away the certificates to the poster presenters. Poster session on architecture. K. S. K. N. J. Kudasinghe and others.
Shakti is Ashoka and H.T. Rupa Singh. in Samara Nayaka and Dorothy. on quantity survey, C. V. Rajasekhar <laughs> and Dorthas. Senaviratna and Dorthas.
W. M. H. P. Sandanaika and daughters. KSLS Hasara and Daughters. Industrial Quality Management, RMAR Ratnayaka and SD Jaisuri. Please remain on stage to give away the tokens of appreciation to the panel of judges of the oral and poster sessions. Professor Anuradha Vaidya Sekar. Dr. Niranga Alahapur. <laughs> Dr. Ravi Hansa Chandra Dilata. Dr. A.K.R.M. Ranasimha.
Chartered County Surveyor Nishanta Vikram Singh. Thank you, sir. Please remain on stage to give away the awards to the best oral and post the presentation. The award for the best oral presentation goes to S. M. M. Sanju. The award for the best poster presentation goes to WMHP Sandhanayaka and Authors. I would like to invite the faculty coordinator of IRC 2023, architect NMRAT Navaratna, to deliver the vote of thanks. persons, judges, presenters, and my dear colleagues and students. Good evening to all of you. After two long days, we have reached the end of the International Research Conference of KDU 2023. It's a great, great pleasure and an, an honor for me to deliver the vote of thanks in this occasion. First and foremost, I would like to thank the rector of the Southern Campus Dean of the Faculty and Deputy, Senior Deputy Dean for accepting the challenge of organizing the conference in Southern Campus for the second time and for encouraging and facilitating us to strive for excellence amidst a lot of difficulties and obstacles. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation to our plenary session chairs, Professor Pernos, who joined us from overseas, Professor Chandra Jaila, who accepted our invitation in short notice, speakers of plenary session, who inspired us with their valuable knowledge and great words, and chairpersons of all the sessions for accepting our invitation and contributing in making this event a huge success. I would like to express my appreciation to our guests who have taken time out of their busy schedules to grace this occasion with their presence. Your presence has added an extra spark to this event and made it even more special. I would like to thank to the judges of technical and poster sessions for evaluating the research and paper presentations. Further, I wish to thank the presenters of technical and poster sessions for sharing their valuable research findings at IRC 2023 of KDU Southern Campus. An event of this dimension cannot happen overnight. It requires careful planning, foreseeing and execution, and an eye for details. Though I have not mentioned individually, there are a lot more helping hands behind the screen who have supported us in numerous ways. I take this opportunity to render my sincere gratitude for them, including department coordinators for their unwavering support since the initiation, committee members, civil and military, who facilitated the event going beyond their comfort zones, all academic, 
military and non-academic staff members and students who have been a part of this event since day one and extend their fullest support till the end. To conclude, let me once again reiterate my gratitude to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam. As we have come to the end of the technical sessions, the proceedings of the technical sessions of Faculty of Built Environment and Spatial Sciences of IRC 2023 are hereby concluded. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem.